but California just jacked their taxes up to 14, what? Was it 14.4? Something like that, yeah. 14.3, I think. Which is Maybe hilarious. more, yeah. 49, something, yeah. I mean, you want more money for doing a terrible job and having more people leave for the first time ever in, like, the history of the state. Yeah, but it look, it, it gets away with it. I know. And, uh, and well, so— Well, people are forced with no choice. What are you going to do? Um, it is—, it is I mean, I mean, there are people at the margins who leave, but uh, but the state government still collects more and more in revenues. So it's you know you get I don't know you get ten percent more revenues, and five percent of the people leave. You still you still increase the amount of revenues you're getting. It's uh, it's 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 inelastic enough that you you're actually able to increase the revenues. I mean, this is sort of the the crazy thing about California is uh, you know there's there's always sort of a right wing or libertarian critique of California that, you know, it's it's such a ridiculous place. It, sh- it should just collapse um, under its own ridiculousness. And uh, it doesn't quite happen. You know, um, the, the macroeconomics on it are, are pretty good. You know, 40 million people, the GDP is around 4 trillion. It's about the same as Germany with 80 million or Japan with 125 million. Japan has three times the population of California. Same GDP means one third the per capita GDP. So there's some level on which, you know, California as a whole is working, even though it doesn't work from a governance point of view, it doesn't work for a lot of the people who live there. And uh, the, the rough model I have for how to think of California is that it's kind of like Saudi Arabia. And uh, you have a crazy religion, wokeism in California, Wahhabism in Saudi Arabia. You know, not that many people believe it, but it, it distorts everything. And then, um, and then you have like oil fields in Saudi Arabia, and you have the big tech companies in California, and the oil pays for everything. And, and then you have a completely bloated, inefficient government sector, and uh, and you have sort of all sorts of distortions in the real estate market, where uh, people also make uh, lots of money, and sort of the government and real estate are ways you redistribute the oil wealth or the. Uh, you know the, the the big tech uh, the big tech money in in California and um, and it's like it's it's not the way you might want to design a system from scratch but it's it's pretty stable. You know, people have been saying Saudi Arabia is ridiculous. It's going to collapse any year now. They've been saying that for forty or fifty years. But you know if you have a giant oil field, you can pay for a lot of ridiculousness. And I think that's <laughs> that's the way to that's that's the way you have yeah. to think of California. Well, the other thing is. You're also there are things about it that are ridiculous, but there's something about it that, you know, it, um, it doesn't naturally self-destruct overnight. Well, there's a lot of kick-ass people there, and there's a lot of people that are still generating enormous amounts of wealth there, and it's too difficult to just pack up and leave. Yeah, I think it's something like four of the eight or nine companies with market capitalizations over a trillion dollars are based in California. So it's, That's amazing. It's Google, Apple, NVIDIA, Meta. Um, I think, yeah, I think I think Broadcom is close to that. And there's no ideal place to live either. It's not like California sucks, so there's a place that's got it totally dialed in with also that has an enormous GDP, also has an enormous population. There's not like one big city that's really dialed in. Well, it's there are there are things that that work. So I looked I looked at all the zero tax states in the u.s and uh and it's always you don't you know, i think the way you ask the question gets at it which is you don't live in a you know in theory a lot of stuff happens on a state level but you don't live in a state you live in a city and so um if you're somewhat biased towards living in a, at least a moderately sized city um okay i can there are i think there are four states where there are no cities alaska wyoming um, South Dakota, New Hampshire. There's zero tax, but um, no cities to speak of. Um, and then you have um, then you have Washington State with Seattle, where the weather is the worst in the country. You have um, Nevada with Las, Las Vegas, which I'm not that big a fan of. <laughs> and then that leaves three three zero tax states. You have Texas which I like as a state, but I'm not that big a fan of Austin, Dallas, or Houston. And I, you know, it's a sort of, um, Houston is just sort of an oil town, which is good if you're in that business, but otherwise not. Um, Dallas has sort of a, 
inferiority complex to L.A. and New York, you know, <laughs> just not not the healthiest attitude. And then, um, you know, I don't know, Austin's a government town and a college town and a wannabe hipster San Francisco town. So, you know, my, my books are three strikes and you're, you're kind of out too. And then that leaves um, that leaves Nashville, Tennessee, which was – and then uh, – or Miami, South Florida. And those, those would be my two cho- top choices. Miami's fun, but I wouldn't want to live there. It's a fun place to visit. It's a little too crazy, a little too chaotic, a little too cocaine-fueled. A little too party, party, party. I think it's, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty segmented from the tourist, the tourist strip from everything else. It it probably is, you know, there probably is something a little bit paradoxical about any place that gets lots of tourists, right. where um, you know, it's 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 in some sense of the case. There's some things that are great about it because so many tourists go, but then in some sense, it's um. It creates a weird aesthetic because uh, the you know the day to day vibe is that you don't you don't work and you're just having fun or something something like that. Right, because so many people are going and, there just to do that. And that's that's probably a little bit off with the South Florida, the South Florida thing. But um, but I think it's um, and then I think uh, and then I think Nashville is 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 a, also sort of its own real place. Nashville's great. Yeah. So those those would be my those are the top two. I I could live in Nashville, no problem. Yeah. I'm probably always, I'm always, I'm always too, uh, you know, I, fifth grade onward since, you know, 70, 77, I lived in California. And, uh, and, and so I'm just a sucker for the weather. And I think there is no place besides coastal California where you have really good weather year round in the U.S. May, maybe Hawaii is pretty good. And coastal California is tough to beat. And um, and you're two hours from the mountains. And man, it's like you know, it's mid-August here in Austin. This is just it's just brutal. Is it? I, I think so. Really? That was too hot for you? It was too hot. For Today's me. mild. I, well, what is it out there? Like eighty? All right, eighty-five. Uh, Ninety-six. Ninety-six. You're proving I do my point. So much sauna that I literally don't even notice it. I'm outside for hours every day shooting arrows, and I don't even notice it. 